Hello, everybody. Uh, continuing on with Chapter 5, uh, Consolidated Financial Statements, Intra-Entity Asset Transactions. And at this point, we're still looking at intra-entity transfers related to inventory. Uh, on our previous presentation, we talked about um, sales being downstream or upstream. So downstream from parent to subsidiary, upstream from subsidiary to parent. So in terms of uh, FASB uh, codification 810-10-45-6, uh, in terms of a downstream sale, um, we, it has no effect on the non-controlling interest uh, net income. But if it's um, upstream, it will have an effect on the non-controlling interest net income. So the accounts that are going to be affected by intra-entity transactions in terms of inventory uh, are, the follow, are the six accounts that are listed here on this slide. So an example is top pays 400,000 for 80% of the voting uh, stock for bottom company on January 1st, 2017. So the acquisition took place on January 1st, 2017. Uh, the non-controlling interest fair value at that time was 100,000. Uh, and we had, I guess, an undervalued uh, asset of 50,000 on the date of acquisition with a 20 years uh, life. Now, we are looking at 2018. So two years uh, or, or uh, 2018 is the calendar year that we'll be preparing our financial statements. Uh, in 2018, we have net income of 70,000, uh, dividends of 50,000, and also note the intra-entity transfers, okay? Uh, so in 2017, so the year prior, uh, we had a deferred gross profit. Uh, so this consolidation entry would have taken place in 2017 consolidated financial statements. Under our assumption, in year two, this 4,000 will have to be uh, recognized. Okay, so we're going to have that entry star G. Now, in terms of the current year, uh, we have a sale of 100,000 that we're going to have to reverse. So that's our entry TI. If you recall, uh, transfer of inventory. And then we also going to have uh, another entry related to uh, the deferred gross profit for the current year. So continuing on with entry star G, uh, this is the $4,000 that was deferred in uh, 2017. Therefore, it's going to be recognized in 2018. Uh, if it's downstream, we are using uh, debit to investment and bottom. If it's upstream, we're going to be using retained earnings. And so we have a decrease in cost of goods sold. This is the second year. So we're recognizing the gain by decreasing cost of goods sold. We increase our net income. So now that we are done with our 2017, that was uh, hanging over from um, 2017, uh, carry over to 2018, we took care of that. So now we are looking at the current year transactions. Consolidation entry TI is the one that reverses the sales related to the current year sales. Okay, so we're not doing an entry TI for 2017 sales. We're doing an entry TI only for 2018 sales. And then we also have to defer uh, the um, uh, gross profit uh, realized on or um, that we're projecting from the sale of inventory if there's any inventory left at the end of the year. And so in this case, we did have, we had that calculation in a previous slide, our cost of goods sold is increased. And if our cost of goods sold increases, then our net income will decrease. And then we're also decreasing inventory to set our inventory back to its original cost. So if we are dealing with a downstream sale or upstream, there's going to be uh, certain differences. 
and these are outlined here. Uh, we have a downstream sale on the left and upstream on the right. Uh, so we can see this is the entry G. Uh, this was for the deferred gain in 2017, that's recognized in 2018. Uh, if we have a downstream sale, then we're going to debit investment in sub-account. If we have an upstream sale, we have to debit retained earnings. So pay attention to this debit on retained earnings because it's going to affect our consolidation entry S. So uh, we're still looking at downstream on the left and upstream on the right. Uh, of the screen and so we can see here the difference in retained earnings for this entry okay so there was no adjustment to retain earnings once again from an entry star g okay uh, so retained earnings comes from the balance sheet of our subsidiary 310 however under the upstream uh, we did have an adjustment to retain earnings for the deferred gross profit from the previous year that is being recognized in the current year. Therefore, that uh, changed the amount that we are debiting for retained earnings for our subsidiary. So as a result, um, the investment in bottom account um, is credited uh, for, has also changed. These amounts have also changed for uh, the investment in bottom account and the non-controlling interest. Now, I sort of wanted to explain this non-controlling interest net income figures that we have uh, over here. Uh, again, uh, this will be downstream, so I'm going to put a D in here, and uh, this will be upstream, okay? That's a D, by the way. And so, uh, the 13,500 comes, if, if you look at a previous presentation or slide, uh, you'll see that the net income from the subsidiary in 2018 is 70,000. And there was amortization uh, from an undervalued asset on date of acquisition. So this is the amortization. So this reduces our uh, subsidiary net income. And then we multiply it by the non-controlling interest uh, percentage, and we arrive at the non-controlling interest net income. Now, uh, that's when it's downstream, right? So when it's downstream, we sort of ignored this whole uh, concept of the deferred uh, gross profit. But if it's upstream, then we have to actually account for the recognized profit and the deferred. So we have the subsidiary's net income, and then we subtract uh, the amortization. And here we are subtracting the current year deferred gross profit. And then, uh, so this I'm going to put here uh, year one. I'm sorry, this is 2018. Um, so this would be year two. This is going to be very confusing. <laughs> okay, so this is, let's put year one because it relates to 2018. So the second year will be 2019. So right now uh, it's being deferred. So this um, reduces my net income. Uh, and then the one that was uh, deferred in year one, but is now being recognized in year two will be the $4,000. So this actually increases the subsidiary's net income. And so uh, we have our uh, adjusted subsidiary net income and then multiply by the non-controlling interest percentage and that's how the 13,100 comes to be. And that concludes our presentation. <laughs>